So, uh, good day to everyone. John Balneo here, your clinical instructor for this uh, subject, health assessment skills and lecture. And today we're going to have a little discussion uh, regarding the uh, abdomen, the assessment of the abdomen. At the same time, we're going to demonstrate to you how to perform this one. Okay, konti lang information na ibabato ko sa inyo sa video na ito because I'm going to have an online or synchronous learning with you guys. Uh, if not, this week, then next week, okay, for the assessment of the abdomen. So, let's start, okay? Usually, we start with the assessment, but unfortunately, ang procedure yung gagawin natin is about the assessment. So, instead of starting with the assessment, mag-start ako with the preparation. So, we need to prepare all the materials na gagamitin natin. Okay, but before doing that, we have to ask our client to, ano, to urinate. Kung hindi pa siya kapag urinate, we have to ask our client, please po, humihingi na po muna kayo. Kasi kung ang client natin hindi na, hindi pa nag-urinate, and then suddenly, pag niya, when we are about to perform the procedure, okay, suddenly, the client uh, states, ay ihi ako. So, paano na lang yan? So, kailangan na pahihingi ng pasyente natin. So, yung oras natin, na-consume na. Or kaya naman, sabi ng pasyente, pasyente, hindi siya naihi. Nung pala, naihi pala talaga siya. Okay, so, that, that uh, situation, will put our client to a situation na kind of discomfort. Okay? So, it, it will give a discomfort feeling to our client. Hindi comfortable yun. Okay? Try to imagine, you are pressing the abdomen at the same time, yung uh, pubic, uh, pubic area. Okay? You are palpating it. And then, ang pasyente mo na iihi. So, it will give uncomfortable feeling to your client. Okay? So, what else? You have to assemble all the equipment na gagamitin natin for this procedure. For the equipment na kailangan lang naman natin dito is examining, examining light. Since I am in a well-lighted room, okay, hindi ko na kailangan na examine, examining light. Usually, ginagamit lang naman yung examining light niya sa mga area kung saan, hindi masyadong maluwanan. Okay, what else? If you're going to uh, check or wanted to uh, check it orally for any lesions, meron ka nakita, for example, na sugat or any lesions like uh, uh, postules, macules, etc., then you can uh, use an examining light for that. Okay, but again, for the examining light, gagamitin mo lang to if hindi masyadong maliwanag yung surroundings. And also, if you're going to uh, verify yung nakita mo uh, abnormality to your client. So what else? We will also going to use this one. Okay, this is well, the, the tape measure. So, gagamitin tayo ng tape measure for this procedure. This one's being used for the no, measurement of the abdominal girth. So, ngayon na lang, I'll just turn off the fan. Medyo maingay kasi ito. Medyo maingay tuloy. Okay, yeah. The tape, me tape measure. Okay, what else? Definitely, for the auscultation, we're going to use this one. Stethoscope. Okay, my favorite stethoscope. Diaphragm lang ang meron. Wala siyang bell. So, what else? Um, skin marking, yeah, gagamit din tayo skin marking, pero ang skin marking kasi uh, hindi siya masyado ginagamit for a reason na pag naligo ang pasyente, mabubura rin yun. And at the same time, nagdo-document ka naman, sinusulat mo rin naman yung nakukuha mo na abdominal girth, no? for us to use the skin marking. Okay, so after that, we will provide client privacy. Kung meron tayong uh, curtain, privacy curtain, we have to use it. Lalo-lalo na, uh, we're going to expose the skin of our client. So definitely, uh, we need to provide the privacy. I discussed naman na sa inyo on how to provide the privacy. We can actually use yung blanket ng pasyente natin, the gown. Okay? There are many ways para makapag-provide tayo yung privacy dun sa may client natin. So after that, uh, we will also inquire about uh, some of the followings. For example, ang client natin, there is actually an incidence of abdominal pain. Tanyin natin pasyente natin regarding that pain. Sa new location. Okay, you can ask your client, meron po bang masakit sa inyo? If the client says yes, you, you can ask your client, can you point it out? Kung saan po masakit? Kung hindi na kayang ituro, you can actually use the four quadrants or better, the nine regions okay, of the abdomen. Mas maganda yun. Okay? What else? Uh, aside from the location, you can also ask for the onset. Okay? Kailan pa po ba nagsimula yung ang sakit na yan? Kahapon? Yung isang araw? Okay, you can also ask those things. Ano pa? Yung sequence. Sumakit. 
Eh, sumasakit dito. Tapos sabi ni patient, sumasakit din po dito. Saan ba sumasakit? You can ask, katulad ng radiating pain, you ask your client, saan po masakit? Sabi ng pasyente mo, the client uh, told you, medyo masakit dito sa likod, then it radiates dito sa may upper quadrant, right upper quadrant. Okay, sumasakit dito. And at the same time, sumasakit din, bumapababa dito. Okay, so, as you can see, you already have the sequence no pain ng pasyente natin. What else? Chronology. Okay, the time. Okay, kailan ito sumakit. Then, uh, tanungin mo, uh, prior to admission, ilang araw na ba yan? Okay, what else? The quality of pain. In order for us to assess the quality of pain, we will use the pain scale. Okay, I already mentioned that, uh, that one naman to you guys before. You can ask your client, uh, from the scale of 1 to 10, gano'n po kasakit? Where 10 is the highest number. Okay, the cl uh, your client says 8. Ako, sobrang sakit nun. If that is the case, uh, we have to refer to the doctor. Okay, 8, 9, 10, sobrang sakit na yun. Okay, pero usually, ang 5, tolerable pa yan. Pero pagka lumagpas tayo ng 5, ako, medyo masakit na yun. Okay, what else? What, what if naman, sir, ang pasyente po natin is baby? And they're not yet familiar with the numbers. So, paano po gagawin natin dyan? We can actually use the Wong Baker's Pain Scale or the Baker Wong Pain Scale. Ang Wong Baker's Pain Scale or the Wong Baker Face Scale, uh, it uses uh, different pictures. Okay, smile is actually yan. Then, ipapaturo natin yung, baby, yung papaturo natin sa may baby gano'ng kasakit. Okay, uh, can you please point out uh, gano'ng kasakit, yung naramdaman mo, then ituturo ng baby, yung mukha, kung saan, napakasakit. Okay? So, yun yung pwede natin gamitin sa mga pedia or sa mga baby, kung saan, they're not yet familiar with the numbers. Okay, what else? So, aside from that, aside from the quality, we can also ask our client for the frequency. Gano'n po ba kadalas sumasakit yung uh, abdominal pain ninyo? Gano'n po ba kadalas? Okay, sa pagdating po ninyo rito, gano'n na po kadalas? Tatlong beses, dalawa, isa, okay? We, we can also ask those things. Ano pa? Some associated symptoms, katulad ng ano. Uh, if the client states, I have hypogastric pain, okay, pumaliban po dyan sa may hypogastric pain, ano pa po ang naramdaman ninyo? Then your client states, medyo naduduwal ako, so that is nauseated. Worse is what? Your client states, nagsuka ako, okay? The client vomited. So, those are some associated symptoms na pwede natin tanungin. Some associated symptoms. Okay? So, what else? Some incidents of constipation and diarrhea, pwede natin tanungin yan. Because if our client has a constipation for 5 days or 1 week, ako napakatagal nun, ano? Okay, baka mayroon ang fecal infraction yung pasyente natin. If that is the case, malamang sa malamang talaga, is what? Distented? Okay, medyo mo, tumitigas, medyo malaki yung abdomen, ano pa? Talaga mayroong pain kasi one week nandito dumudumi eh. Ano pa? Diarrhea. Definitely mayroong palalakit dyan sa may abdomen. Okay, kapag kaya mayroon niyang diarrhea or jarrhea. Okay, what else? Some changes in the bowel habit. Katulad ng ano, constipation today, then after a few days magiging diarrhea or LBM, loose bowel movement. After a few days, two to three days, ayan na naman, constipation. As you can see, pabago-bago. Okay? So, if that is the case, most probably mayroon ang problema ang pasyente natin. And remember, at a changes in the bowel movement could be a sign, could be a sign or a symptom, a clinical manifestation of a disease or a disorder in the abdomen. And kasama rin yan, kasama rin yan changes in the bowel movement, saan? Doon sa may uh, colon cancer. Okay, po pwede maging ano yan, pwede, pwede natin makita na clinical manifestation yan sa may colon cancer. Okay, so we have to check those things. So, ano pa? Aside from the constipation and diarrhea, we can also ask our client for the appetite. Okay? Suddenly, nawala yung kanyang appetite. Nagkaroon ng anorexia. Dati, normal naman ang kanyang pagpupo. And then, suddenly, biglang nagbago. Okay? So, ano nangyari? Okay? Nagkaroon ng anorexia. Changes in the appetite. Or loss of, loss of appetite. Okay? Again, it could, it could signify a problem to our client. Okay? What else? Some specific signs and symptoms. Katulad ng ano? Heartburn. Okay, uh, nagkakaroon ng heartburn ng pasyente natin kapag kumakain siya or kaya naman walang laman ng sikmura or kaya naman sumasakit ang kanyang sikmura and then sa atin yun nagkakaroon siya ng heartburn. Okay, there's actually a direct relationship kasi no, remember, andito ang stomach, andito ang heart, halos magkatabi lang yan. There's a possibility talaga 
na kapag uh, sumasakit ang sikmura o pwede tumaas ang CBT, pwede pong magkaroon ng heartburn. I remember just last week, no, not just last week, eh, uh, since last year, I met a lot of students na kapag uh, nagkakaroon ng return demonstration, eh, nakikita ko meron silang gamot na ano, omeprazole, Kremel S, iba na may student meron din silang HNBB or Dyson and Butyl Bromide, also known as Nabuscopan. So, I asked these students, baka meron ka ganyan? So, they will say, uh, Sir, uh, uh, meron po kasi akong GERD, A-G-E-R-D, okay, the gastroesophageal reflux disorder. And the GERD is some, sometimes, it is being triggered, okay? the GERD is being triggered by uh, anxiety. Okay? Especially, return demonstration namin. So, some of the students are having the anxiety. So, nangyayari, tumataas ng acidity, tumataas din yung uh, gastric content. Okay? Kaya minsan nadadamay yung heart. Okay? Kaya nakakaroon sila ng heartburn. Okay? So, isa lang rin yung sa mga na-encounter namin. What else? Flatulence. Normal lang naman kung butot. Okay? Pero yung madalas kang umuutot, delikado na yun. And mas, mas delikado is what? Yung hindi ka umuutot. Okay? Katulad ng ano, in the event kung saan ang pasyente is uh, merong fetal infection. Okay, what else? Colon cancer. Naku, delikado yan. Okay, kaya yung utot na po importante rin. Lalo na kapag uh, pasyente natin yung sinoperahan. Actually, yung, yung flatus, the flatulence, isa rin yung sa hinahanap natin after the operation. Kapag uh, hindi po umutot ng pasyente natin, ibig sabihin niya, hindi po kumabalik yung ability of your body or your, uh, what do you call this one? The ability of your GI tract okay, to perform its duty. So, in that case, bawal ka pa kumain. Okay, kasi hindi pa bumabalik yung gastric motility, uh, the GI motility, the segmentation, and then the peristalsis. Okay, so yan, napaka-importante na ko to. Okay, what else? Belching. Yeah, I remember one uh, one episode in The Good Doctor, kung saan yung isa sa mga janitor, isa sa janitor nila, uh, Dr. Murphy, okay, using his observation skill, tinignan niya, dighay na dighay yung janitor nila. So, ang sabi ni Dr. Murphy dun sa kanyang colleague, uh, sabi niya, I think our, uh, our janitor has uh, pancreatic cancer. So at first, they do not believe. And then later on, kinonvince nila yung janitor na mag-undergo ng laboratory test. So chinek yung pancreatic enzymes and then idinaan sa, sa iba't ibang laboratory test yung janitor. And then later on, they found out na, yeah, totoo nga. Okay, mayroong pancreatic cancer yung patient. Okay? Sa simpleng pagbighay lang, sa simpleng belching lang, okay? sa may simpleng pagbighay-bighay ng pasyente, okay? it, can give, uh, it can give us a lot of information regarding his or her situation. Okay? Remember yung sa may, uh, yun nga, sa may the good doctor, later on, namatay yung uh, janitor nila. Okay? Inoperahan, but unfortunately, hindi na gumising. Ang ganda nung episode na yun. I hope na napanood din nyo. Kung hindi pa, please panoorin din nyo. What else? So aside from the belching, difficulty in swallowing, ito yung tinatawag natin na uh, dysphagia or dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. If our client has some difficulty in swallowing, we can also assess for the oral. Okay? I mean, the oral cavities. Baka meron dyang stomatitis, merong singaw dyan. Okay, what else? Baka merong sugat or any other diseases na meron doon sa may oral cavity. And then what else? Hematemesis, pwede natin tanungin. Uh, if our client vomited a blood or vomited something that has a blood, most probably there's a problem in the GI. Okay? I remember last week one of the student, uh, he actually sent me a message regarding to some situation ng no family member. Then he asked me uh, regarding that, Sir, uh, may suka po kasi ng dugo. So the first thing na tinanong ko is what? kumakain ba yung pasyente ninyo? Sir, hindi po. Okay? Maasalamang po kami sa may swero at maasalamang po kami sa may gumot. So, I told him, okay, there's a huge impact noong walang laman ng sigmura. Okay? So, tinanong ko, gano'n ba katagal na walang laman ng sigmura? Sir, one week na po. Walang iniinom, wala po kinakain. So, ano mangyayari? So, there's a possibility na tumas ang gastric acid, right? So, tinanong ko, uh, meron bang gamot for the gastric acid? Yes, sir, sabi niya. Okay? Pero, we cannot rely kasi dun sa may medications alone. Okay, kailangan malaman na yung sikmura. At least tubig. Unfortunately, dun sa client nila, hindi napapainom ng tubig. 
So, ano nangyari? Ikaw nang auto-digest yun. Tumas ang acid, nagkaroon ng auto-digest yun. Try to imagine yung stomach, okay, nagtikis-kisan, okay? If this is the stomach, okay, since walang laman ng sigmura, syempre, ganyan yan, nagdidikit, and then makikis-kisan yun. Tinatawag natin auto-digest yun. So, ano mangyayari? Kapag ka mayroong friction na nangyayari, pwede magsugat po yan. Okay, and then later on, sa may pagsusugat, pwede mag-produce yun na uh, blood, which is a clinical manifestation na napakadelikado. It only means mayroong ulcer ng pasyente natin. Or worse, pag yan, if left uh, untreated, pwede mag-cause ng perforation, pwede mabutas. And then later on, o pwede magkaroon ng problema. Okay, worse, it is peritonitis. Worse, yeah. pwede magkaroon ng septicemia. Marami, marami pwede maging problema if left untreated. Okay, so those are some of the things na pwede natin tanggihin sa may pasyente natin. Ano pa ba? Kaya ano pa yung pwede natin i-assess dun sa may pasyente natin aside from the hematemesis? Okay, um, ano pa ba yung pwede natin tanongin? Hmm, hematemesis, the belching, okay, the flatulence. Uh, the last one, yeah, surgery. Okay, tanongin din natin if our client undergo na surgery. Katulad ko, nagkaroon ako ng surgery before. Okay, so isa lang yun din yan sa pwede natin tanongin. So, hindi na mabibigla yung mag-inspect na, huy, meron pa lang, ano dito, meron ditong uh, scar. Okay, so, we can already expect. Okay, ano pa? Yung pasyente natin, nagkaroon ng uh, appendicitis before, so yung napilahan nag niya, nag-undergo ng appendectomy. So, we can uh, check na, mer we can uh, look forward na merong scar sa my right lower quadrant. Ano pa? Okay, pang pasyente natin, nag-undergo ng cesarean section, definitely, meron din po tayo ritong uh, what do you call this one? Scar na makikita. Okay, so, yeah. After knowing all those things, after inquiring all those things, we will now ask our client into a supine position. As much as possible po, ano, flat on bed. We can provide, uh, what do you call this one? Pillow. Okay, to our client. Pero kung walang pillow, okay lang po yan. Okay, flat on bed. Nakasupine position ang pasyente natin. So, what else? So, paano po pagka client natin is in a sitting position? it will become hard for you to assess the abdomen kung ang client natin is nasa may sitting position or kaya naman nasa may high fowler's position o kaya naman nasa may semi fowler's position. Again, as much as possible, uh, our client should be flat on bed. So, fine position po tayo. Okay? So, um, so after those things, after preparation, we will now move on to implementation. Okay? In doing the implementation, uh, I wanted to clear something to you guys. So, last time, we performed lung assessment. Okay? So, this time, abdominal assessment ang gagawin natin. Last time, ang technique na ginamit natin is IPPA, inspection, percussion palpation, and then the auscultation. So, IPPA is actually the sequence. But this time, ang magiging sequence po natin is IAPT. Inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. So, bakit po naging IAPP9? Bakit, sir, hindi po ginawang IPPA? So, that is something that you have to include in your uh, return demonstration video. Okay? You have to uh, include what is the rationale, bakit, wala, bakit nabago yung sequence natin. From IPPA naging IAPP. Okay? So, sige, let's start with the inspection. We have to inspect the abdomen, but uh, in order for us to do that, of course, we have to uh, what do you call this one? Kailangan expose natin yung abdomen. Definitely, ang hirap i... Ano, nakikita ba sa may video? Ang hirap mag-inspect ng abdomen nang hindi mo nakikita. I, I, you just have to expose yung area kung saan yun lang ang i-assess mo. Okay? Sorry, medyo magalaw. Okay, ito yung singit ng pasyente. This is the pubic area. Yeah. So... Above is actually the chest of our client. So this is the, uh, what do you call this one? The abdominal region of our client. Ito yung i-assess natin. Okay, so first of all, you have to inspect. Inspect mo for skin integrity. Okay, are they normal? And then you also have to look for any lesions sa may client natin. Inspect mo the abdomen for the contour and symmetry. In doing that, definitely you have to stand up. Okay, you have to stand up and then check mong mabuti, okay? I-check mong mabuti for the contour. Ang contour ba ng abdomen ng pasyente natin is normal? 
Okay, meaning to say, uh, flat ba yan, rounded, or baka naman malaki. And then also, you have to check also for the symmetry. When we see symmetry, kailangan equal in size. Okay, ang, ang right should be equal with the left. Hindi po pwede malaki dito, maliit dito. There's a problem with that. There's also possibility na mangyari yun. There's a possibility na makita ninyo yun na asymmetrical. Okay, asymmetrical yung makikita ninyo dun sa may pasyente natin. And if ever na asymmetrical ang makita ninyo, dun sa may pasyente ninyo, you have to ask your client to take a deep breath. Okay, sir, can you please do, uh, can you please take a deep breath and then hold it? Okay, can you please hold it for a while? And then i-check mo ngayon for the contour and symmetry. Bakit? Sir, what's the rationale behind that? Bakit kailangan po natin, uh, 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 excuse me, bakit kailangan po natin i-instruct uh, yung client natin to do a deep breathing? And then why, why do we need to ask our client to hold it? Simple lang. By inhaling, you are actually, you are actually what? what? Uh, you are actually expanding your lungs. And then by holding it, okay, it remain as it is. By, oh, by doing that, you are actually pushing the liver downward. So kung ang liver is malaki, okay, madali mong makikita the contour and symmetry. Okay, that's the reason why we are asking our client to take a deep breath and hold it for a minute. And then, hold it for a second. I mean, sorry, masyado matagal yung um, a minute. Hold it for a second and then i-check mo if normal in size, symmetrical, okay ba ang contour? If nakita mo na mas malaki dito sa may right upper quadrant, then it only signifies what? There's a swelling. Okay? Now, there's a swelling in the uh, liver. May, may paglaki ng liver. Most probably your client has hepatitis. Okay? Mayroong hepatitis yung client. Malamang. Okay? So that's it. That's how you check it. Okay? Pwede na po yung huminga. Masyado nang matagal yun. I think uh, one minute na atang hindi humihinga si Juno. Okay? So after that, after checking for the uh, symmetry, the contour of our of the abdomen of our client, we will now uh, what do you call this one? We will now check for the distension. To tell you honestly, may mahirap uh, i-check ang distension by just merely using your eyes. Okay? By doing this one, you can ask your client, medyo matigas po ba ang inyong abdomen? If the client says yes, i-validate mo yung information na binigay niya. Okay? You can actually hold it. Ah, oh, nga, no, medyo matigas. Okay, so you already check it. Nakita mo na. And also, to verify it, you're going to check for the abdominal girth. Okay, this time, lagamit na tayo ng tape measure. Okay, so by doing the tape measure, okay, pasok mo lang yan sa mailalim. Okay, sagit lang po ah. I'm going to check for your abdominal girth. Okay, kailangan normal na makuha natin dito na ang bigat ni Juno. Ang hirap tuloy pasok yung tape measure. Hindi hila. Okay. So yeah, you already have it. May pasok ko na. Next, hanapin mo yung navel. Asan ba yung navel ni Juno? Ito actually yung navel. Ito yung uh, puson. Okay, and then, just above that, dun mo ilalagay yung tape measure. And then, check mo. Kung ilan yung, ilan yung nakuha ko. I got 34. Okay. Sexy ni Juno, no? 34. Okay. I got 34. So, ang abdominal girth ni Juno is 34, which is normal. Okay, bakit? Ilan po ba ang normal range? Actually, there's no, there, there's no exact answer for that. Eh. Okay, there's no exact answer for that, for a normal range because sometimes it varies. It varies on a situation. Okay, why did I say that? Uh, first of all, ang normal for male is uh, 40 below, while for female, it is 35 inches below. Yung nakulat yung kay Juno, 34. So, meaning to say, normal. Okay? Because 40 below for male, while sa female, we have 35 and below. Okay? So, yun yung mga may measure natin sa may, yun yung makikita natin for the abdominal girth. Normal. But, as I have said, sometimes it varies. It varies on a situation such as, kung ang client po natin is obese, definitely, malaki yung makukuha natin na abdominal girth. Okay? What else? Kung ang client natin buntis, definitely, malaki yung makukuha natin na abdominal girth. And, that is an invalid uh, data. Hindi valid yung data na makukuha natin doon. And disregard natin yun kasi may baby eh. Okay, what else? Kung ang pasyente natin is uh, obese. Uh, I mean, malnourished. Masyado mababa. 
Okay, so the abdominal girt, abdominal girt is only applicable sa mga normal na tao. Tulad, I mean, normal yung kanilang uh, weight. Okay, and yung physical, okay, we are physical na, physically, the abdomen, physically, okay, kung normal. Okay, again, the abdominal girt is only applicable sa mga normal na, normal size. Okay, sige, diretsuhin ko na normal size. Napaka-init naman dito sa may val. Ang hina ng aircon namin. Okay, so what else? So after checking that, we also have to observe for the abdominal movement okay, associated with the respiration. So kapag ang pasyente natin is humihinga, okay, definitely there's a rise and fall of the chest. Ganun din po dapat sa may abdomen. Okay, there should be a rise and fall. Up and down of the abdomen. What else? If ever na wala, if ever na mayroong rise and fall ng abdomen and then yung chest wala, check mo rin, baka naman mayroong barrel chest ang pasyente natin and then vice versa. Okay, if that is the case, there's really a problem. Okay, may problema. Kailangan i-document mo yun. Kailangan refer natin yun. What else? Peristalsis. Okay, nakikita rin po ba, sir, ang peristalsis, ang peristaltic movement dun sa may abdomen ng pasyente natin? Yes, but to tell you honestly, medyo mahirap po itong makita. Okay, some other book says yes. But for me, sa akin na, based on my experience, it's really hard to find the peristaltic movement. Why? Because your client is inhaling and exhaling. He is actually breathing. So, inhale, exhale. So, there's a rise and fall of the abdomen. So, sometimes, hindi mo talaga makikita yung peristaltic movement. Not unless, you, were, you will ask your client to please hold your breath. And then, dun mo makikita. Okay? Can you please hold your breath? Hold your breath for a while. And then, check mo. Okay? There's actually a movement. Okay? Ng abdomen. That is, that is what we call the peristaltic movement. That is the movement of your intestine. Okay, what else? Uh, you can also check for the aortic pulsation. Saan natin makikita ang aortic pulsation? So, hanapin mo yung cycloid process kay Juno. Saan ba? Ito, ito yung cycloid process. The good thing about kay Juno is meron siya actually rib cage. So, nakakapa namin. Okay, makakapa, makakapa ninyo yung rib cage ni Juno. Okay, ito yung cycloid process niya. Below the cycloid process, doon ninyo makikita yung tinatawag natin uh, aortic pulsation. Okay? But, again, for a normal person, hindi niyo usually ito makikita. Sa mga mapapayat, yes, makikita niyo. Okay? So, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. After the inspection, after ins inspecting all those things, yung mga nasabi ko, special relations, we will now move on to the auscultation of the abdomen. So, i-auscultate po natin yung abdomen for the bowel sounds, for the vascular sounds, and even for the per uh, peritoneal friction rubs. So, yun yung mga bagay, or should I say, those are the sounds na hanapin natin sa may pasyente natin. So, in this case, we will now use our uh, stethoscope. Okay? So, saan ba natin lalagay itong stethoscope na to? First of all, hanapin natin saan po ba natin nilalagay or where should we put the stethoscope in the abdomen of our client. Okay? Uh, I already provided a picture doon sa may manual ninyo. So, alam niyo na kung saan doon nilalagay. So, mga, so, sa hindi pa nakakakita or hindi pa binabasa yung kanilang uh, manual, ang paglalagay ng stethoscope is sa may apat na quadrants. Or you can simply uh, do this one. Okay? So, asan po yung navel? Navel is located here. Ang singit nandito. Okay? Just above the singit, dun ka maglalagay. Gawing pubis. Or should I say, medyo mababa ng konti. Ito yung pubis, medyo mababa ng konti. Singit, pubis, okay, baba. Okay? That is the number one. That is one. And then yung two naman is about... Since this is the navel, makikita ba yung the video? Okay, since this is the navel, about two to, uh, 3 to 4 inches away from the navel, that is the second uh, point kung saan nilalagay yung stethoscope. Okay, 1, 2, and then above, 3, okay, that is where you're gonna place the uh, stethoscope. And then, fourth one will be above the side, uh, just below the cycloid process. Okay, 4, then 5, 6, 7. Yeah. Kung naglagay ka dito, dapat katapat lang din. Okay. Kung naglagay ka dito, katapat lang din. Okay. Sa akin, dito, nakikita ba yung the video? Okay. Sa may, yan. Ang pusod ko, ito. Ang singit nandito. So, just above that. That is the first placement of the uh, stethoscope. And then, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Yung third is sa may upper quadrant. Right upper quadrant. And then, 4. Sa may baba ng cycloid process. And then, 5. Katapat lang din ito ng upper quadrant. I mean, ito say sa may left upper quadrant. And then 6, about uh, four, 3 to 4 inches away from your umbilicus. 
Okay, sa may nibel. And then last, medyo malapit po dun sa may inyong singit. Okay, so those are the areas. Pakicheck nyo lang yung picture na yan nandun sa may manual. Okay, para mas ma-visualize ninyo mabuti kung saan ninyo ilalagay yung stethoscope for the auscultation. So first of all, let's find this what we call the bowel sounds. Okay, for the bowel sounds, ang gagamitin natin dito is the flat disc. Okay, the diaphragm. Wala, tal wala talagang bell ito eh. Okay? Pero I really love this stethoscope. Yung stethoscope na ginagamit ko. So, diaphragm lang meron siya. But since, ang ba bawal sounds ang inanap natin, nagamitin po natin is what? Okay? The diaphragm. Okay? We will go going to use the flat this diaphragm. This one. And then, we're going to place the stethoscope over the four quadrants. So, yun yung mention ko, no? Okay? Over the four quadrants. Doon natin nilalagay yung stethoscope. Okay? So, what else? Uh, you have to count for about 5 to 20 seconds, papakinggan mo for a gurgling, gurgling, gurgling sound. Okay, medyo irregular yung sound na to. Okay, and you have to listen for about 5 to 10, uh, 5 to 20 seconds. But once na marinig mo na, you will now move on. For example, here, I'm going to check. Okay, I'm going to place the status. Hope ano, if ever na it makes you irritated or what, uh, just tell me, okay? So I'm going to place it here sa my first point. And then, meron ako narinig, gurgling sound. Okay, move on na ako to another point. Tito. Then, another one. Then, hintayin mo about uh, 5 to 20 seconds. Hanggang 20 seconds, pakinggan mo. Usually, marinig mo yan uh, after 20 seconds. And, boom, na meron na. Then, baba ng side by process. Okay, may narinig na. Then, move on ka na to another quadrant. Pakinggan mo lang ano, if after 20 seconds at wala kang narinig, okay, delikado yun. Okay, you have to report it. You have to document that. Sabihin mo na uh, there's actually, what, diminished sound. Wala ka ka mong narinig na sound. That, uh, usually, uh, ang pasyente natin is meron dapat yan na sound na napoproduce. We call it the timpani. That's actually the, what we're looking, timpanic sound. But uh, to be specific, yung sound na hinahanap natin yung sa may abdomen using the bowel sound is what we call the how do you call this one? Yeah, the bowel sounds. Okay, the burburigmus. Okay, yun yung hinahanap actually natin. And then you have to listen for about 5 to 20 seconds. Ang mga pasyente natin na inoperahan, usually wala po kayo marinig dyan. Okay, agad-agad. It takes time. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, ang hihintay natin sa may pasyente natin is yung utot. So once na meron ng utot yung pasyente natin, pwede na rin natin pakinggan for the bowel sounds. O possible na, possible na rin tayo for the bowel sound. But, uh... Kung hindi pa nag-diminish yung anesthesia sa may patient natin, negative tayo for the bowel sounds. Okay? So, dapat present po yung abdominal sounds. Saglit na lang, napakainit na talaga dito sa may office. Dito sa may, hindi pa lang nakaturn. Yeah, hindi nakaturn yung yung aircon. Saglit lang. Okay? So, we will now move on. Uh, from bowel sound, we will look for the vascular sounds. Saglit lang. Okay, so after the bowel sounds, ang init kanina, sensya na. So after the bowel sounds, we will now move on to the vascular sounds. For the vascular sounds, same lang lang din. Okay, kung anong part ka naglagay, anong point ka naglagay ng stethoscope doon sa may paghahanap natin ng bowel sounds, ganun din for the vascular sounds. So ang hinahanap natin dito are some pulses where, okay, mga pulso doon sa may aorta. So asan ba yung aorta? Hanapin mo lang yung sarcoid process. Okay, ito. Okay, this is the sarcoid process just below there. Doon mo ilalagay yung stethoscope. Next one will, that will be the renal arteries. Saan po yung renal arteries? Okay? So, this is the aorta ang gawin dito. Okay? Right, and, right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant. Okay? If you're not yet familiar dito sa tinuturo ko kasi medyo mahirap makita, okay, you, can also, you can refer to the, ano, to the manual. Check ninyo yung manual ninyo, makikita ninyo rin kung saan yung point na paglalagyan. So, this is where we put the stethoscope for the renal arteries. Next one, for the uh, iliac arteries, ito yung label, puso ni patient. Okay, sa gilid lang yan, about 3 to 4 inches away. Okay, doon doon natin nalagay yung stethoscope. We will look for the uh, iliac arteries. And then lastly, lagay natin dito sa may femoral arteries. Saan gawin yan? Sa may baba ng label, sa may taas ng singit. Doon natin nalagay yung stethoscope. And then we will listen for the brewing. Okay, it's really hard to explain how it sounds like. Pero parang doon ito siya. Parang swooshing sound siya. And dapat, negative tayo dito. Kung hindi mo narinig yung tinatawag natin brewing sa may part na to, then that's a good one. 
Kasi dapat hindi mo talaga maririnig. Okay? In order for you to listen, para marinig mo rin yung presence ng brewery and how that sounds looks like or how how it sounds like, okay, gumamit ka ng stethoscope, okay, then yung stethoscope, the diaphragm, lagay mo ngayon dito. Okay, sabay, what, carotid mo. Okay, lagay mo sa may carotid, ang marinig mo dyan is what? Marinig mo yung swooshing sound. Okay, that is what we call the brewery. Pero sa may abdomen kasi, abdominal cavities, dapat negative tayo for the bruits. Okay? Brewy. Okay? It pronounced as brewy daw, not bruits. Okay? So, what else? By the way, for the uh, vascular sounds, ang ginagamit po natin dito, since it is a low-pitched sound, ang gagamitin natin dito is the bell. So, hindi na natin gagamitin si diaphragm. Instead, gagamitin natin yung kapila, which is the bell. Okay? Ano pa? Uh, after that, after the vascular sounds, we'll now move on to the peritoneal friction rub. So, for the peritoneal friction rub, mga hanapin lang natin dito yung sound na ano, parang leather na nagkakaskasan. Okay, isa na rin nilalagay doon, so, uh, doon, doon din sa may area kung saan tayo nag-assess for the vascular and then the bowel sounds. Okay, ilagay natin doon yung stethoscope, I mean the, the, the diaphragm, then pakinggan natin meron dyan yung parang something like this. Something like that. Paparinig kayo, don't worry, paparinig kayo doon sa may, uh, di ba this one, sa may online discussion natin. Okay? So, positive po ba na marinig natin mo niya? Dapat hindi. Okay? Dapat negative tayo. So, kung hindi mo narinig, yung peritoneal friction grab, then that's a good one. Kasi dapat, absent po ito. Okay? So, ano lamang po ang present dapat? Yung bowel sound. Pagka negative tayo for the bowel sound, very kado yun. Okay? So, ang, ang pinakinahanap lang po talaga natin dito is the bowel sound. For the vascular sound, the peritoneal friction rub, kung wala ka, wala, hindi mo talaga tumarinig, that's a good call. Okay? So, yeah. What else? In doing the auscultation, by the way, I forgot to mention to you, lalo lalo sa mga, mga, mga lugar kung saan malalamig, or kaya naman nasa may, nasa may area kayo ng hospital na napakalamig, before placing the stethoscope, okay, before placing the stethoscope, lagay mo muna sa may talon mo. Okay? Do, do it like this. Bakit? Since metallic po ang stethoscope, lalo na yung bend. Okay? Since metallic yan, there's a possibility na lumamig yun. So, pag nilagay mo yun dito sa may skin ng patient, there's a possibility na magkaroon ng guarding behavior ang pasyente natin or kaya naman makilite. Okay? So, the next time na lalagay mo yung stethoscope, the bell or the diaphragm, okay, magkaroon ng guarding behavior yung patient mo or kaya naman patitigasin niya yung abdomen niya in which we don't want that thing to happen. Okay? So, after the auscultation, we will now move on to the percussion of the abdomen. Or I already taught you guys how to perform the percussion. Same lamang din yan dun sa may pagpa-percuss natin ng chest, ng thorax, ng pasyente natin. We use the middle finger ng left and then we use the middle finger ng right. Okay? Okay, so meaning to say, dalawa po yung daliri na gagamitin natin for this procedure. Okay, dalawang daliri. Both fi uh, middle fingers. Okay? Pero as mentioned to you guys, Uh, during my last discussion, okay, pag nagpa-percuss ako, I only use the, my left, I use my uh, left middle finger, and then sa my right finger, right naman, yes, I use my two fingers, the index and then the middle. Okay? So, paano po ba ang pagpa-percuss ng abdomen? You have to do is look for the points. So, sa points, ta, saan yung mga points dyan? It's really hard to tell you guys in this perspective. Okay? Medyo mahirap, but, but please bear with me. Kung nahihirapan ka, look for, look for the, ano, uh, doon sa may manual natin. Check ninyo yung manual. I provided you a picture there. Okay? Sa may picture, doon, marking ninyo nyo, saan yung point kung saan ilalagay mo or saan ka magpa-percast. Okay? So, ang pagpa-percast natin is, starts dito sa may pinakababa. Try to imagine yung large intestine. So, ascending colon, transverse colon, and then descending colon. So, may pinakababa ng ascending colon, doon tayo ma, unang magpa-percast. So, ang pagpa-percast natin is, we start with, Pinakaba, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then ito na yung kanyang transverse colon, 1, 2, 3, and then from here, bilang kapababa doon sa may transverse, uh, descending colon na hindi, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hanggang umabit ka sa may pinaka-last part ng uh, descending colon. Okay, so yun yung mga area na i-perpercast natin. Okay, ano yung nahanap po ba natin dito? Ang nahanap natin dito is what? May nakas. Okay, because Juno here has a uh, air pockets dito sa may area na to. Okay? Ang inaharap actually natin dito yung timpani. So, yung timpani, these are the sound being produced kung merong air dun sa may organ na yun. 
Okay? May air po ba dito sa may large intestine? Siyempre, nandito yung utot eh. Okay? Ayan, medyo humina. Medyo humina. Pagka medyo mahina, yan yung tinatawag natin na dullness. Okay? Sa dullness, po pwede mababa, decrease, po pwede rin naman na absent, po pwede rin na uh, flatness, po pwede rin naman na resonance. Okay? So, if ever na marinig natin yung mga sound na yan, sometimes they vary. For example, pwedeng absent ang marinig mo dahil, what? Punong-punong ng tae. Eh, po, pwede naman na mahina ang marinig mo kasi kukunti lamang yung laman na gas nun. Kaya yun yung nyo Okay? So, there's also possibility na hindi, what do you call this one? Hindi, ano ang tawag nun? Hindi, I forget the terminology. Hindi siya, hmm, ano yung term yun? I forget the term. Kailangan ba ano ko yun? Saglit lang. Mm-hmm. Ano yung sound na yun? Ano yun? Symmetrical. Okay? Sorry. Umisip ako na. Symmetrical. Okay? Dapat, if you're going to percuss, pwedeng hindi symmetrical yung marinig mo. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng meron kang marinig dito na timpani, while dito there's actually a dullness or pwedeng absence. Okay, po pwede talaga mangyari po yun. Bakit? Po pwede yung walang utot dito, pwede naman dito mayroong utot. Okay? Ang worst is what? Lahat po yan is what? Absent ang sound. Mahirap yun. Okay, po pwede rin. Po pwede kasi na malakas ang sound dito eh. Bakit? Dito na ipon yung gas. Pagdating dito, medyo punong-puno. Why? Because there's a possibility na mayroong fecal infection. Okay, punong-puno na tayo dito. So, hindi talaga symmetrical yung marinig natin or mapepercuss natin. Okay? So, let's start the percussion. Again, I'm going to use my middle finger here, my left hand. And then the other one here, I'm going to use my two fingers instead of one. Okay? Okay? There's a sound. As you can see, medyo iba yung sound na produce kasi hindi talaga pantay-pantay uh, yung organ dito ni Juno. As you can see. Kaya ang ganda gamitin ni Juno for the assessment eh. Kasi marilinig mo dito, okay? There's a hyper resonance. Ang dito, hindi masyado. Okay? Medyo decrease ang sound dito. Okay? So those are the areas na ipapercuss po natin. Now, after the percussion, uh, we will now move on to the last part, which is the palpation of the abdomen. For the palpation, ang gagamitin po natin dito is only light palpation. Again, light palpation lamang ang gagamitin natin dito. We're not going to perform deep palpation. Ginagawa lang ang deep palpation if ever sa light palpation is what? Meron kang naramdaman. To confirm that, you're going to perform deep palpation. Okay, again, light palpation lang ang gagawin natin. Pero if, you really, if, if it is really a mass na alamin natin what's beneath the skin, what's underneath that, okay, deep palpation po ang gagamitin natin or gagawin natin. At least 1 cm deep lang, okay, that is what we call that light palpation. So, ano po yung mga ipapalpate natin? Just draw a line, okay? Check mo yung upper quadrant, uh, the four quadrants. The right lower, the right upper, the left upper, left lower. So, yun po yung mga area na ipapalpate natin. In doing the palpation, you can use this hand, and then do it in circular motion. So, ano yung nanap natin dito? We are actually looking for the masses, mga bukol. Okay, or if ever, merong pain. Suddenly, sabi dito ng pasyente, alright, cool. So, meaning to say, meron pa ng pain dito. So, inote natin yun. Okay? Circular motion hanggang sa ano? Lahat ng abdominal, abdominal, uh, abdominal area, the abdominal part of the body, has been covered. Okay? Kailangan ma-cover yan. So, if ever naman po, nakakailangan natin yung deep palpation, you can use both of your hands. Okay? This one, ito ang magpupush, papailalim, pa- push na ito para madiinan pong mabuti yung mga kamay natin. Okay? I mean, mga kamay tuloy. The finger pads. Mamadli kasi ako ng oras na. Okay? Then, circular motion tayo. Okay? Kung wala naman, ikaw na, wala ka naramdaman dyan, wala ka na pang take na mga masses, then that's a good one. That's a good call. Okay? Nagtag tayo for those uh, masses. So, what else? Ano pa ba yung kailangan natin malaman dito sa so, may pagpapalpate? Um, if ever ang pasyente, pasyente natin is nakikilite, okay, if ever nakikilite yung pasyente, hindi na kaya yung kamay ko, we can actually use yung kamay mismo na pasyente natin. Okay, yung kamay mismo na pasyente natin, nagagamitin pa paano yan, yan yung papalpate natin. And then, 
ilalagay lang natin yung kamay natin okay, sa may babaw ng kamay ng pasyente natin and then ipagpate natin. But this time, we cannot perform light palpation. Ang gagawin natin dito is deep palpation. Para sa ganun, nararamdaman ko at nararamdaman din ng pasyente. Okay, so kapag may naramdaman ng pasyente, eh, sabihan lang tayo. Sabihan lang tayo na, tell me sir or ma'am, kapag mayroon po ka nararamdaman dyan na parang bukol, tell me. Okay, then if the client says yes, i-confirm mo, deep palpation tayo. What, what else? In doing the palpation, you can also look dun sa mayroon mukha ng pasyente. Okay, while doing the palpation. Bakit? Uh, while doing the palpation, tapos ang pasyente mo is mayroong facial grimace. Medyo gumanan siya. Ibig lang sabihin na ito is mayroong masakit. Okay, so we ask our client, mayroong mong masakit dun sa mayroong palpate ko. And the client says yes, okay, we have to confirm that. Okay, so what else? Aside from those uh, four quadrants, we can also uh, palpate the Uh, what do you call this one? The urinary bladder. Okay, so ibaba natin ng konti. Andito yung urinary bladder. Ni Juno, palpate din natin yan. Pagka medyo matigas, it only means na puno yan na ihi. Okay, we perform this procedure sa mga buntis. Okay, mga mga nga na kasi kailangan pa ihihin. Kung hindi iihi ang pasyente prior to the delivery, pwedeng naging hindrance yung uh, urinary bladder yung sumipaglabas ni baby. What else? sa mga matatanda na hindi na hindi masyadong makaihi, hirap silang umihi. If that is the case, uh, we will tell that to the doctor, then the doctor will tell us or will order to insert a catheter. Okay, sa mga buntis, straight catheter will do. Okay, sa mga client natin na medyo pang matagalan ang, ang i-end na mangyayari, okay, since nahirapan sila, we can use or the doctor will order uh, insert, insertion of the folic catheter. Okay, so sometimes it depends. Nakadepende po yan sa may doctor, okay? kailangan ng order ni Doctor because that is an invasive procedure. You're going to insert a uh, folic catheter inside the body of our client. So, okay, what else? Okay, after performing all the procedure, definitely, okay, cover mo na ulit yung pasyente mo. Kung paano mo siya nagatnan, ganun ka rin dapat aalis. Okay, cover mo yung patient. And then, perform hand, hand washing. And then, document uh, the procedure na ginawa mo. Okay, document ng procedure and also some discrepancies or any abnormalities na nakita mo dun sa may abdomen ng patient, okay, you have to chart it down. Okay, sulat mo yan dun sa may narrative report natin. What else? Uh, if ever na mayroong problema, as I have said, report it to the doctor. Okay? So, in your uh, return demonstration, you have to uh, show how to perform those procedures na IAPP, inspection of scrutation, percussion, and palpation. And as much as possible, you really have to show the abdomen of your client. But for the privacy of your client, pwede hindi mo pakita yung mukha ng pasyente mo for the privacy. Pero kung okay lang naman sa may pasyente mo, then why not? Ang kailangan lang naman makita dito is the abdomen and the, proce the procedure on how you are doing this one. Sa mga nagtatanong, sir, pwede po ba yung uh, mannequin? O pwede po ba yung teddy bear? O ulit-ulit mo sinasabi, if you really have no other choice, Sige, go ahead. But as, as I have said before, mas ma-appreciate ko kung totoong tao ninyo. Sa totoong tao ninyo ito gagawin. Okay, last year, dun sa may procedure na, sa ganitong procedure, mga classmate nila, okay? They perform this procedure, dun sa mga classmate talaga nila. Okay, what else? Uh, if you have some question, you can actually ask that. Or you can comment that. Or you can ask me in our GC. Please now, sa GC kayo magtanong, huwag PM. What else? Yeah. That concludes our discussion and a uh, little demonstration about the assessment of the abdomen. If you have some clarification, please send a message in our GC. That concludes our discussion for the assessment of the abdomen. Thank you guys.